In this video, you will learn how to assemble swage lock cone and thread fittings with the swage lock coning and threading tool. You will need these components, which are available for 1 quarter, 3 8 and 9 16 inch tubing. Manual adapter, bench top vise, coning gauge, coning tool, threading tool, deburring tool, chip brush. To protect yourself from injury, be sure to wear safety glasses. Attach the manual adapter to the bench vise. Insert the tube into the vise. The tube should slide freely. If it does not, loosen the bench vise slightly. One end of the tube should extend from the manual adapter approximately 2 inches or 50 millimeters. Attach the coning tool to the tubing. Place the tip of the appropriate size coning gauge between the manual adapter and the end of the coning tool. Slowly slide the coning tool towards the coning gauge, using the coning tool to push the tubing. Continue until the face of the coning tool contacts the coning gauge. This will establish the appropriate gap. Tighten the bench vise to secure the tube. Verify the gap with the coning gauge. Reset the gap if required. Apply cutting fluid as shown. Engage the drive nut into the manual adapter. Advance the drive nut until the coning blade makes contact with the tube. Loosen the drive nut 1 8 turn to back the blade away from the tube. To avoid injury, do not place fingers or hands near the coning blade while operating the coning tool. To achieve the proper surface finish on the cone, turn the coning tool handle clockwise for several revolutions at a constant speed while slowly advancing the drive nut. Stop frequently to apply additional cutting fluid to the coning blade and the end of the tube. Provide gentle resistance to the drive nut to prevent the coning blade from biting into the tube. Continue coning until the coning tool bottoms out against the manual adapter. While continuing to turn the handle clockwise, slowly loosen the drive nut by turning it counterclockwise. Stop turning the handle once the coning blade is clear of the cone. If tubing has not been coned fully, you may reattach the coning tool and restart the coning process, as long as you have not moved the tube in the vise. Remove the tube from the coning tool. Remove chips from the coning tool and end of the tube. If necessary, deburr the tube just enough to break the burr. Do not chamfer the ID. Next, thread the tubing. Loosen the vise and position the tube so that it extends approximately 2 inches or 50 millimeters from the vise. Tighten the vise. Gently slide the threading tool onto the tube until the threading die makes contact with the end of the tube. Apply cutting fluid to the tube as necessary, placing a few drops through the chip window. Turn the vise handle clockwise until it is parallel to the ground and the groove in the threading die is facing up. This establishes the starting point to begin threading. The groove will be visible through one of two chip windows. Begin threading by applying pressure to the threading tool while rotating the handle counterclockwise. Remember, you're cutting a left-handed thread. Advance the threading tool counterclockwise two full turns, then reverse direction one quarter to one half turn to break chips. Use the groove as a reference point to count turns. Advance the threading tool counterclockwise one more full turn. Reverse direction one quarter to one half turn to break chips, and then apply cutting fluid to the threading die. Repeat the previous step, adding cutting fluid every other turn while counting the number of turns until the proper thread length is reached, so that the chips are broken every revolution and cutting fluid is added every two revolutions. Depending on the tube size and connection type, the required number of revolutions to achieve the proper thread length will vary. Refer to Swage Lock Manual Coning and Threading Tool, IPT Series, User's Manual, MS13224 for more information. 
Remove the threading tool by rotating it clockwise until the threading die unthreads itself from the tube. Chips caught between the threads and the threading tool bushing can make removal difficult and may damage the threads and or bushing. To avoid further damage to the threads, use care when removing the threading tool. Loosen the bench vise and carefully remove the tube from the bench vise. Using the chip brush, remove chips that may have entered either end during coning and threading. Once you have coned and threaded the tubing, check it for acceptable surface finish. Acceptable surface finish means that the tubing is free from burrs, gouges, and scratches. Any mark that can be felt with a fingernail is not acceptable. Once you have inspected the tubing, you are ready to place the fitting onto it. Place the fitting into the vise. Thread the collar counterclockwise, left hand thread, onto the tubing. Continue threading until one to two full threads are exposed at the cone end of the tubing. This will indicate proper position of the collar. Once the collar is threaded onto the tubing, slide the gland nut over the tubing and insert the tubing with the collar into the fitting body. Make sure the cone end of the tubing rests firmly on the angled seat of the fitting body. For medium pressure fittings, tighten to these torque values. For high pressure fittings, tighten to these torque values. Once you have inspected the fitting and the tubing, you are ready to install the assembly into your system. Observe standard fluid system installation procedures. Contact your authorized Swagelock Sales and Service Center for further assistance.